Actions manifest possibilities. What do I mean by that? The prophet, when he said, I want active mores, was talking about action not necessarily in the objective realm of being, but in the subjective realm of being in order to bring about the uplifting of fallen humanity. Now, leaving that just as stated would not be a service, and it requires explanation in this way. The prophet, when he was speaking of those things which were regarding the uplifting of fallen humanity, he was not talking necessarily simply about the doing of good deeds proper action, uh, being forthright, honest, uh, all of those traits that uh, Moors are known uh, for as far as uh, industriousness and things of that nature, being uh, studious, being diligent. Those are expected. What we're talking about are those things which take place in the subjective realm of being. But to understand that, you have to understand what is subjective. We live and exist in what's called the objective realm of being, the realm in which objects exist. The subjective realm, some might call it a spiritual realm, I liken it to be understood more easily by identifying it as the energy realm, the realm in which consciousness resides and all is mind. Einstein had a famous saying, you may have heard me quote it before, that at the very last scientific interview before his retirement, a reporter, a scientific reporter, asked him, Dr. Einstein, with you being one of the world's foremost physicists, what is reality? You spent your entire life working on theories and things such as uh, the theory of relativity and E equals MC squared, and identifying what those cause and effects of our objective reality are. But they asked him, what is reality? His response was interesting. He said, reality is that which all of the wise men, gurus, sages, and masterminds of all ages have always identified it as being. And he said, reality is an illusion, but a persistent one. Strange response coming from a physicist, but remember, a physicist is a person who studies physical reality, cause and effect, the operation of things. Just as I explained in an earlier episode, I believe it was More Talk episode 11.03, if I were to take an object, let's say, such as a coin, hold it out in front of me, and drop it to the floor. What's an operation there is called the law of gravity. If I were to take an object such as a ballpoint pen and tie a string around it, swing it over my head so that it extends itself similar to the blades of the helicopter, that would be the laws of centrifugal force. If I were to stick my hand in fire, and perceive the uh, sensation of burning, that would be the law of thermodynamics. And the laws go on and on and on and on because things operate within this perceived makeup, this dimension which we're in, by law and order. 
everything is a science and everything which is scientific must have methodologies, methods by which the operations occur. These are boundaries. These are the rules in which something must function by. Now, when we take all of those rules, be they commonly understood or not so commonly understood, and when I'm talking about not so commonly understood, I'm talking about the strange occurrences that might happen, let's say, near a black hole, where time is warped and bent in a manner which is not uh, something that we are familiar with here in the dynamics of our particular geographic uh, location here on Earth. Things are not as stable as they appear to be elsewhere as they are here, but nevertheless they are still operating by particular rules of order, operational functionality, the manner of cause and effect, the way they must operate, because that is the law of their operation. If you take all of the laws and put them together, then you're simply talking about all law. Or pronounce it another way, all law, all law. Now, we often hear more say study, study, study. Studying is important. Just like studying our Holy Quran Circle 7. It's our daily bread. It's nourishment. But don't get that mixed up with Moorish science. And what I mean by that is, is there more science in it? Of course. But there's esoteric and there's exoteric knowledge. And there's knowledge in it which unfolds and reveals the more science inside. Now, when you're studying, studying, studying the correct information in the correct manner, that's when you receive benefit or more benefit from that study. And again, what I mean by that is that there is a methodology by which one must study. And it's studying the correct information in the correct manner now, manifestation requires action. That's why the prophet said, I need active mores. And it is through these practices, practice, 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 makes more perfect. That's, you can look at a law office, they call it a law of practice because these practitioners practice, they'll never get it perfect. There is no perfection other than the Creator. But as you begin to practice appropriately, correctly, and with frequency, those degrees and steps in which you must go through in order to become more adept at your practice, such as a practitioner of metaphysics, which is more science. You become more adept at the state of your art. Okay. So, let's take a look at that. Let's go in a little bit deeper. When the prophet said, return to the mindset of your ancient forebearers, he was not just talking about in the concept of the ritual or the sociological practices of our community. He was not just talking about returning to a base understanding of the rule 
rules or uh, customs of our community, culture, heritage, and hereditament, or those laws which govern it sociologically, wasn't just speaking of those things that we often might find ourselves studying only by way of the Moore Science Temple. But he was speaking of doing so on a biological level. Now, when every one of us came here by and through our own volition and made the decision to enter into this realm, we all came with our own unique signature and resonant frequency. That was your particular harmonic resonance in this tapestry of cosmic harmony. But very quickly after coming, your resonance fell into discord because we exist in an environment which is very out of sync with the manner in which major forces have ensured would be thrown into and held within a stasis of disharmony, tension, uh, strife, and purposefully, not simply through those accords which came about after World War II, which actually set into law uh, that certain frequencies such as uh, the manner in which instruments are tuned would be remodulated and set to a scale that is out of tune with nature but also relative to the actions of men which have thrown us out of kilt with uh, how things are supposed to be. Now getting back to your own particular resonant frequency, think of it similar to the old radio dials that you can turn those knobs and you would start to hear static and it would sound hissy, unclear. And then as you become closer and closer to the frequency that you're trying to dial into, let's call it 99.5 on your FM dial. As you become closer to that number, the clearer and the clearer the modulation becomes. As you actually land on that frequency, then you receive a more clarity, a crystal clear signal comes through. The same is true with respect to the recalibration of your own harmonics. Now, everything in nature vibrates. Each of the cells in your body that are made up of billions of atoms, those atoms are vibrating at a particular speed. That's its resonance. And its resonance is an oscillation, an upward and downward movement like you might envision a sound wave. And the nature of your particular wave is unique to yourself. No one else has that same or was assigned that same resonant frequency because it is a fractal of the consciousness of our Creator. And we'll go into that in more depth, but not right now. So as you study, study, study the correct information in the correct manner and with the correct amount of frequency, that's action to manifest your adeptness in your state of your art. As you do that, more and more so, 
you become more of the cause of those things which take place in your life. Now, as you are studying, studying, studying the right information in the right manner, during your sleeping rejuvenation periods, what is actually occurring on a biological level is a resetting, a rehealing of the connection of your actual neural fiber network, brain synapses. Currently, most of us are unfortunately miswired because they've been rewired and set into a more of a Eurocentric frame of mind. Think of it as straight lines. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. However, when your mind has been bent out of its natural uh, manner of calculating, you have for all intent and purpose lost your mind. And when I say lost your mind, I'm talking about the, the mindset of your culture, of your ancient forebearers, if you would. And as you study, study, study more, the correct information in the correct manner and the correct intervals, you then in your sleeping rejuvenation periods began to mend yourself, heal yourself, reconnect properly your neural synapses so that you began to operate at a more efficient and optimum manner of operation. As you reach a tonal frequency of your recalibration of your own unique vibratory frequency, there used to be a old commercial, Ella Fitzgerald, who's on Memorex. She would hit a particular, sing a particular note and they had a wine glass that we, they would hold up. And when she sang that particular piercing note, it would shatter the wine glass. Some of you old enough to remember that might remember that particular commercial. <clears throat> the same is true with respect to when you are able to recalibrate the frequency and modulation of your neural fiber network once your synapses have been placed back in its proper set of order, it will immediately shatter or dissolve the, the calcification around your pineal gland, opening your first eye, automatically providing you with epiphanies that you would have never imagined because much of the information that you can receive by way of this matter is information which does not necessarily come through books or from someone else informing you or teaching you of something. They come from what's called the Akashic Records. And when you receive this information it comes by way of epiphanies. For me to try to explain it would be like trying to tell a fish about fire, a totally aquatic creature that would have no point of reference. And remember that a finite mind cannot take in the information of the infinite. The infinite omnipotent is an endless resource of uh, information. Much of it, most of it, far, far outside of our realm of understanding because it is multidimensional and we just can perceive barely 
in an efficient manner, our own singular dimension. Until such time that you learn or become more efficient as a practitioner of your more science, which you can do, and hopefully, which many of you will do. And the purpose of this is to help to motivate you in seeking further information as to how to unlock your own potential and abilities. Now, as I was saying, as you're studying, studying, studying the correct information in the correct way and at the correct intervals and for the correct amount of time, as a practitioner, you then begin to oscillate closer to your true, unique vibratory frequency. And as you do that more often and more often, you will find that you will start becoming the cause of most of what is happening in your life. And as you become the cause of those things which manifest in your every day to day existence, you become your own cause most. Because you are causing most of what is occurring in your life. It is you that is manifesting these things to come about, these positive events. No longer allowing life simply to happen to you, but you are now setting the course. You are now the navigator of your own happenstance. Things are not just happening to you. You are making these occurrences manifest in your life through Moorish science. Not way of the objective realm in totality. That's just a very small portion of it. But by way of the subjective realm of being, 